The FJ-1 was proposed in late 1944 by the U.S. Navy and was designated the XFJ-1 and was in competition with designs from Douglas and Vault. It was hoped that the planes would be ready for theoretical land invasion of mainland Japan, scheduled for May of 1946, but obviously things changed. The first flight of the prototype XFJ-1 took place on September 11, 1946, and it was flown by Wallace Lean. And after testing, the U.S. Navy ordered 100 of the FJ-1s, and they began delivering the planes to the Navy in October of 1947. The plane had an armament of six 50 caliber Browning guns mounted in the nose. It was powered by an Allison J-35A2 turbojet engine producing 4,000 pound-feet of thrust. It had a max speed of 547 miles per hour and a ceiling of 32,000 feet. The FJ-1 made the U.S. Navy's first operational aircraft carrier landing with a jet fighter on, at sea on March 10, 1948 aboard the USS Boxer. The landing was made by Commander Pete Orend. Eight FJ-1s were also carried aboard the USS Princeton on a cruise, but it was somewhat of a failure. One plane landed and the wing broke off and the aircraft ran off the side of the ship. Luckily, the pilot was actually rescued. But after several more landing accidents, it was decided that the FJ-1 just wasn't a very reliable carrier-based airframe, and the Navy canceled its contract after only 30 aircraft were delivered. Pilots also noted that the lack of temperature control or pressurized cockpit made it a very uncomfortable plane to fly. Not to mention its performance at max weight was pretty horrible. Another drawback of the FJ-1 as a carrier airplane was that there was no provision for folding wings due to air brake flaps being located on the wings. It did, however, attempt to lend itself sort of to being more a compact airplane by having its front landing gear fold up enough so that the nose of the aircraft almost touched the ground and it could be tucked under the tail of the plane in front of it, which was a bit of an awkward workaround to be honest. The 30 aircraft on hand were really never used as anything other than test aircraft for the Navy, and they were soon phased out in order for the new F-9F Panther, which had folding wings and better suitability to being a carrier-based aircraft. The FJ-1 lived out, lived out the remainder of its service life as a Naval Reserve aircraft and was completely phased out by 1953. Its legacy really was basically that it was the first plane to make a carrier landing and take off at sea and that a good bit of its design went into the F-86 Sabre and the F-J-2 and 3 aircraft.